All right, so uh, I'm going to show you guys coil building today. So I'm just going to make like a just a simple kind of base kind of form, just show you like the, the do's and don'ts of how to do this. Um, coil building is a great way to build. Uh, it allows you to build things, anything you really want to, but you basically because you're going to be rolling out coils that are about three eighths of an inch thick, it allows you to basically build anything you want one layer at a time. You know, so you can do it that way and keep it really simple. You can also you know, you can build up one side and have things kind of undulate and do all kinds of different things. So, you know, you have to play around with it a little bit. But if you're just going to keep like a simple, symmetrical kind of base form, you need a, a bottom for it to start with. So I just take a piece of clay and I'm just going to flatten it out with my hand. And remember, there are rolling pins and things like that if you want to use those. That, that's an old school way to make a slap. You slap it on the table and it spreads out kind of evenly. So if you want to make something really round, you can find like a lid or something, put it on there and trace it out. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to worry about being super precise with it. So I'm just going to cut out a starting point. See how round I can get it. Without any kind of tracing. All right, so if you can, if there's any boards left in there, I would recommend using a board to build on. And then I would also grab a scrap of paper, which of course I forgot. Or even a piece of plastic and put it down on the board, and then that way your clay won't get stuck down to the board. All right, so rolling out coils, which is our basic building block that we're working with here. If you've never done this before, it can be a little bit tricky to learn how to do. It looks really, really simple. Just like anything else, there's a slight learning curve to it. So, you know, start with something like that. And it doesn't even have to be that big. And what you're gonna do is just with equal pressure back and forth, you're gonna roll from your palm to the tip of your fingers. And you move your hands back and forth, back and forth. So once you get it, it's really easy. But sometimes it's tricky to learn how to do this. And I see sometimes students will, you know, sit there and go like that, and then the thing goes flat. It's got flattened out. You know, it's got to be a, all the way around. So there are a few tips I can give you to learn how to do this um, a little easier. When you roll out your coils, when you learn how to roll out coils, stand up to do it. If you're sitting down, a lot of the chairs put you at, like, you know, this is the tabletop, and it's pretty hard to roll coils like that. The other thing, too, is that as you're rolling coils, the table is very dry and dusty, and it's going to absorb a lot of the moisture out of your clay. So if you keep a water bottle handy, let's hope this works. There it goes. You don't want to soak down the table, but if you just mist it and keep it damp, it'll keep your coils from drying out. So we're going to score and slip all these coils together just to make sure that they're going to stay together. And remember, it's, it's important that you really scratch it up good and use plenty of slip. That's what's going to hold your clay together, unless you're blending all your coils together, which I'll show you in a little bit, too. What's that stuff? Slip. Were you here when we talked about slip? Oh. So slip is just really, really wet clay. Oh. So to make slip, you just go to the, the recycle barrel and just get some of that really wet slimy out of there. That slimy gunk that's always in there. Put that in your little container with the lid and just mix it up with the paintbrush. So if you just keep it simple like that, the slip will hold it all together don't use any slip and you just stack those coils up like that, they will fall apart when it dries. So one thing that uh, you can do too is you can roll out a whole bunch of coils at once. Because you know, sometimes you don't want to have to stand up, roll out a coil, and then everybody wants to sit back down and work on their piece and then stand up, roll out a coil. Or you just stay sitting and your coils don't turn out right. 
So you can roll out a bunch of coils. And I've actually had students, they will get like a piece of plastic and lay it on the table in front of where they're working and just roll out a ton of coils and just put them on that plastic. And then if they don't use them all in the amount of time that they're here, they just roll them up, carefully put them on their shelf or someplace to store them, and then they have them when they come back. I'm not very good at rolling up coils myself. It takes me a little time. I saw a guy at a conference one time rolling up coils and he would just take a finger clay like this and he would just start going like that and the coil looks like that would just come out of the bottom of his hands. It's like magic. I try doing that and then the coil starts flying all over the place. It makes a big mess. tricks to working with coils when you're doing it you know like the slip and scoring method is that it will get pretty wet because you use a lot of slip so sometimes what you have to do is just take a little break from it and let it breathe let it dry a little bit and just work on something else you know, I'm sure some of you guys are still working on your pitch building projects so you probably still have pots to throw and pots to trim <coughs> caught up on Tuesday and I'll show you guys a uh, slab building project so you'll have that to work on too. So you really start doing a lot of multitasking to get everything done. And you want to you want to kind of have a start on everything. You don't want to just focus on one piece because if you get too uh, consumed with that project you might run out of time for your other pieces. What I want to show you guys once I get some structure here is just how you can blend this all together to uh, make sure that it's watertight. Come on, slip. There it goes. And also, if you're trying to make something that you know you intend for it to be food safe. The best way to do that is to have the inside smooth so that when you put your glaze in there, the glaze covers everything and makes a nice smooth surface. So where the ends come together there, you can do that a number of ways. You know, some people will, where it comes around like that, they'll actually take a knife and cut an angle through it score those two ends, put slip in there, and then push it together, and then you have a tighter fit. I just pinch it off, basically, and then form it in my fingers a little bit so that it fits back together. If I was trying to make something really, really precise, I would probably use that method. do that I wouldn't worry about that for this project but I mean if you want to try that you sure can it's hard to get it like really centered so that you can uh, get a good pull on it yeah I know a lot of potters that uh, they'll throw as high as they can get you know maybe they can only center 20 pounds of clay that's what I have to do now I can't center that much clay anymore <clears throat> my back is so bad I can hardly center any clay um, but anytime I try to go really tall I'll just throw as much clay as I can and then on the top I just add coils and then I'll do a pull across the top to blend it in with the rest. And you don't score the bottom of the coil? I did. Yeah. Oh. 
So, you know, my method of working is always kind of messy. It might not be this messy for you when you're working. So if I want this to start getting wider, and this may come as no shock to many of you, <clears throat> you have to add the next coil on a little bit to the outside of the coil you already added. So you're bumping each coil out as you go. And then of course the opposite is true. If you want it to get tighter, you're if you're making a base kind of form. So you can make other things, just because I'm making a base kind of form doesn't mean that's what you need to make. You don't have to do what I do. It does have to be some kind of a, a volumetric form, you know, an inside and outside to it. But, I mean, you can do all kinds of sculptural things. And this is a way that I used to do a lot of my sculptures. Once upon a time, I used to make these pretty massive pieces. I mean, some of them were six, seven feet tall. They're these big, organic, kind of humanoid, abstract things. And I, I build them out of coils. <clears throat> and keep in mind, too, you don't have to just keep adding layer after layer. So now if I wanted to add some kind of interesting element on the inside of that, Things like, you know, take my coil and do the, the classic snail roll. That's what the students started calling it a long time ago, so that's what I call it now. Add that on there. So, did I talk about this container last time with you guys? <coughs> so if you bring a container in like that, you know, remember the slip has to be really, really Find. So let me show you how to do that if you bring one of those containers in. Have a little uh, a little sieve that you can use. You just force it play through the sieve and it takes out all the little chunky stuff that would block the, the opening. So because I'm rolling this up on itself, I don't need to score inside and put slip in there before I roll it. It's just kind of trapped inside there. But it will be kind of fragile. So if you go and pick this up and you like push on the inside of there, there is a chance of breaking that out of there. So you just want to be aware of that when you're moving your projects around. And then when we glaze these things, the glaze will really fuse everything together, lock it all together and make it strong. You can see I'm getting some Pretty good structure here pretty quickly, but just keep in mind, you know, for demonstration purposes here, I'm, I'm working pretty quickly. I would not normally just throw this together this fast. How tall does it have to be? Um, your coil project, if you're making a base kind of form, you know, like a, a traditional kind of pottery kind of form, I want you to shoot for eight inches tall. So I'm not going to break out a ruler and measure it, you know, at the final. That's up to you to make sure you're, you're building something eight inches tall. But, you know, there are cases where you, you get to, you know, seven and a half inches tall. And to add more to your design just wouldn't make sense. So you stop at seven and a half inches. It can be taller than that. As fast as I'm building here, you, you run into some issues you know, with the, the structure <clears throat> not being as strong as it could be. But to get this to a point where I can show you the things I need to show you, I kind of have to do this. And if I don't take time to really refine this form, slowly setting up, it'll look really, you know, kind of rushed and muddy and not very well done. So just make sure you take your time and think about everything that you do. You know, none of these projects are really things that you can just rush through. I mean, you are, you're learning a craft. You want to remember that you're doing art. A lot of what makes
makes art quality art is the time it takes to refine things. If you rush through projects, projects fall apart. It's almost guaranteed. I'm going to show you how to blend this inside together once I get this basic form made here. If you're going to make something that you want it to be watertight, or you're planning on trying to make something, you know, food safe, like a big mug or something, that's not enough. Um, you want to know, ahead, know that ahead of time because it's going to be pretty hard to, to smooth the inside down after you have some height on it or if you make something that has a smaller top. So remember, clay doesn't like to be thin little bits sticking out in space. So I always have students every quarter that want to make like a crown or a tiara or something like that. That, that just doesn't work. You want to make something, you start with the bottom, you know, build up from there. The bottom helps hold everything together. You can make almost anything. You know, it's just got to have some structure to it. Drippy, muddy mess on the outside right now, but I'll clean that all up as I go. And you can do some shaping, like I can push it out a little bit. The inside, to get the shape right. The clay is very flexible. You can do a lot with it while it's nice and plastic like this. Okay, so if I want to smooth the inside, and you can smooth the outside too if you really want to. I'd like to see the coils. You know, use the coils in an interesting way. It makes for a, a pretty cool surface when you're done because of the, all the ins and outs around the coils. When you glaze that, the glaze is going to have different thicknesses. And even if you just use one color, the glaze will have different thicknesses. And if you change the thickness of the glaze, the glaze color alters a little bit. So some glazes more than others. Like if you used like red on this whole thing, in all the little nooks and crannies, the glaze would be thicker, so you'd get a lot of white. And then on all the little ridges and high spots, the glaze would be thinner, so you'd get uh, I just say that backwards. You'd get red where the glaze is thick, and you get white where the glaze is thin. I'm thinking two steps ahead of myself. It's not working. Okay, so on the inside, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tool, and I'm just going to scratch. Across all those coils. I'll show you what that looks like. But what that does is it just blends all that clay together. Are you using the uh, pointy side of the tool? Yeah. Okay. Do we have to do this? Or 
No. This is an option for if you're trying to make something uh, smooth on the inside to make it uh, as food safe as possible, um, or if you're trying to make something that will hold water. Okay, so I'll do this first, and then if I see any holes left behind in it, I'll fill those with little pieces of clay and then blend those in. So around where I put those snail kind of shapes, um, there's probably going to be some little holes in there. So I'm going to take this tool then, my serrated edge tool, and I'm going to work that surface down a little more. So I usually fill the holes after I do this because a lot of times when you scratch all this clay around like this, it fills the holes for you. You don't have to do a bunch of extra. support it on the outside. Okay, so I got that blended all together. Let's see some holes in there I'm going to have to probably fill. And then to get it nice and smooth, use the one without the teeth on it. And it's just not, it's not gonna just magically, you know, all of a sudden be perfectly smooth. It's gonna take a little work. So this is why I was saying you wanna know that you need to do this basically before you start anything so that you can do this as you build. So if I were a little smarter about how I'm doing this and not in a rush, I would do, you know, three or four coils in height, blend the inside together Three, more, three or four more coils, blend those together, and just keep working up from there. So on the inside then, you'll see that it's a lot smoother now. It's far from perfect. We got some little holes to fill with some clay, and more smoothing to do. Right now the clay is kind of wet, right? So if I were you and I was doing something like this, I would pause here take a break and work on something else for a while and let this dry a little bit, let it set up a little bit. And then when it's not so flexible, because even just sitting out for 15 minutes, it'll lose some of that, that uh, softness. And then you can come back in, take a sponge, bring it out so it's not soaking wet and use that on the inside too. And even just your fingers, your hands make a great tools for smoothing the clay just by dragging your fingers across it. Okay, so you know, you could do the same thing on the outside too. I mean, I'm going to lose all that work I did, but. I could do roughly the same thing on the outside. And if you're building large scale, you're probably not going to have the coil showing. There's no reason why you couldn't figure out a way to make that work. But typically when you're building large scale, you're probably also building something that's not coil pot, you're trying to do something more sculptural. So, you know, if you're trying to make a big figure or, you know, just a big abstract organic kind of form, you would work the surface like this. And then while it's soft, you can play around with it. Maybe I want to Start having it take on a different shape. start shaping it, then you probably are going to have to do a bunch of blending just to keep it all together.
if you try this, you know, it's up to you guys what you make. I don't like to tell people what to make. I really like you guys to get your creative juices flowing and come up with your own ideas. I want everything you guys to do and experience in here to, to be meaningful to you. And if I'm laying out a blueprint for you of what to do, then you're just following the directions and not really getting a chance to be creative. Some people have a hard time with that. But when you get forced into it, people usually surprise you. Come up with some pretty cool stuff. Also takes a little effort. When we start doing these hand building things, have to get a little more creative. I always have students say things like, I'm not artistic, I can't do it. I don't want to hear that. Everybody can do this. Yes, yeah, some people have talent and they're you know more creative and better at some of these things than other people. But being human puts you in a special category. You have creativity built into you. Not to say that animals aren't creative. But we have a, a specialty. It's what makes us successful creatures, right? That creativity. So what if I wanted to like bring up the sides or something? I could just start adding coils on one section. So it's even muddy, muddier, if I could talk, muddier than it typically is. Keep playing with it, see what happens. All right, so you get the idea. 